assalamu alaikum uh, today i have come here once again and welcome all of you in my online class you know who am i so there is no need to be introduced again and again and let's start the class and today uh, class topic i want to discuss i want to talk to you uh, parts of predicate object classification of verb and last of all difference between clause and phrase so at first parts of predicate you know what is subject and what is predicate i don't want to say that let me write a sentence at first parts of predicate the boy is playing the boy is playing football in the field if i ask my students that which one is the subject you must answer the boy is the subject you will must and which one is predicate it is very easy is playing football in the field so my discussing this parts of predicate so what are the elements of predicate what can be found in a predicate you didn't think in this way but today i want to say that there is verb yes you can see verb number 1 number 2 obviously object object and what are the list number 3 complement complement and last of all the thing is adjunct adjunct you know what is verb and here is a discussion part also classification of verb so i don't want to say anything more here at this moment and there is the another part complement i will not discuss complement today and my discussion is that object and adjunct sometimes you make mistakes between this two part object and complement if i ask my students which on is the object here in this sentence many of you may answer that sir football in the field is the object and even you are thinking so maybe but my view and the truth is quite different that here is a one object and another is adjunct so before saying about adjunct let me clear what is adjunct adjunct tells about the verb in four sector number 1 how when when where how why adjunct gives this information about verb when the verb is come take place when the verb takes place when the where the verb takes place and how the verb works and why the verb finish the matters and now here the word football so you know many of you know how to find out object in a sentence and yes it is a common way if we ask the verb if we ask the verb two questions number 1 what and another one is home playing playing means khela so what ki khela if i ask what we play the answer is that football so here the object is football again if we ask home 
kaake khela again the answer there is no answer so here in this sentence there is only one object and that is football so my question what is in the field in the field it gives the information where the verb is taken place so the boy is playing where is where the boy playing where is the boy playing the boy is playing in the field so it is assumed let me give some more examples that you can be clear birds are flying in the sky number 1 number 2 you should you should read books for pleasure pleasure number 3 the man the boy is 10 years old number 4 teacher teaches us english i have already written four examples look carefully look at the board first sentence birds are flying in the sky which one is the verb are flying so now ask the verb what what is flying the answer is bird so it moves to the subject but it shouldn't be so there is no object home again if you ask the verb by the word home kake will not be the answer so if you don't get answer by asking question to the verb by the agent what and whom if there is no answer there will be no object so yes it may happens a sentence may frame without an object so what is in the sky in the sky is assumed again you should read books for pleasure so the verb is read read means pora what what read books so this is object and what is this for pleasure this is assumed because it tells about why it covers the question why keno boi porbo here the word here the verb tells about why should we read book so if we get the answer of why then it will be it will be assumed again in third sentence the boy is 10 years old here the verb is and 10 years old it covers the question how so this part is not object this is assumed again teacher teaches us english so i have written this example for for the purpose to show you that there may be two object in a sentence the verb is teaches so if you ask the verb teaches means shikha dewa what ki shikha dewa english again you you uh, you, you ask the verb whom kake shikha dewa ask amader ke so there is there are two verbs two sorry there are two objects the first one english and the second one ask so from these examples it is clear that there may be object one object in a sentence there may be two objects in a sentence there may be no object in a sentence so we should not mix object and assumed we should not make mistakes what is object and what is assumed the clear is now it is clear 
what is object now verb classification very easy and you have learned many verbs you know the names of many verbs but there is a discipline classification you should learn it verb classification so what is verb verb in general sense there are two kinds of verbs yes it is finite and non finite finite and non finite you know that but you have learned you may learn that what is finite non finite no need to memorize the definition of finite and non finite i want to tell you one thing and that is very special for example how many at first tell me how many tenses are there in english grammar yes that is three kinds of tense present past and future and every every kinds of tense is divided into again in four parts so three into four there are 12 structures there are 12 structures of tense present tense past tense future tense present indefinite present continuous present perfect perfect continuous in that like way there are 12 structures so those verbs are included those verbs are included in the 12 structures they are called finite verb those verbs are banglai bolle je verb gulo tense er 12 ti structure er moddhe ashbe so those verbs are included in 12 structures they are called finite verb there is no need to learn no need to memorize the definition of finite verb is it clear now again what is non finite verb very simple excluding the 12 structural verbs of tense excluding excluding means by the tahole tense er baruti structure er baire when we will not use the verbs in 12 structures then the verb will be non finite verb tahole tense er baruti structure er baire je verb gulo use korbo sheigulo hocche non finite verb mone thakbe ami liklam na kintu class shomoy kom finite verb ke ebong non finite verb ke non finite verb gulo abar tin bhage divided into 3 infinitives infinitive er modhe bear infinitive o ache infinitive gerund gerund and participle participle ekta boleni infinitive two plus verb infinitive kake bola hocche टू प्लस भार्बेर भार्बेर बेस फॉर्म बेस फॉर्म जीरन व्हाट इज जीरन यू नो भार्ब प्लस आईएनजी मैनी ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स लर्न हैव लर्न दैट व्हाट इज जीरन भार्ब प्लस आईएनजी बट माय क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज पार्टिसिपल भार्ब प्लस आईएनजी बट पार्टिसिपल आर डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री पार्ट्स प्रेजेंट पार्टिसिपल पास्ट पार्टिसिपल एंड परफेक्ट पार्टिसिपल लेट मी फिनिश एट फर्स्ट gerund verb plus ing but you have to notice that verb plus ing it is gerund but the function of gerund must be noun a gerund has to be noun in function in parts of speech so what is gerund though it is verb plus ing but its function is noun it is a noun participle there are three kinds of participle they are present participle present participle on second verb plus ing verb plus ing here the gerund is verb plus ing again the present participle is verb plus ing so what is the difference between present participle and gerund present participle the function of present participle is adjective give me an example walking is a good exercise here walking verb plus ing life is nothing life is nothing but a walking shadow life is nothing but a walking shadow here the another verb plus ing walking so give a look on the board have a look 
working here verb plus ing but its function is noun it is subject it is noun hata and after that subject here sets the verb but here life is nothing but a walking shadow here walking verb plus ing it is a participle because here its function is an adjective a participle always will be an adjective here there is a noun shadow shadow means chaya so walking means hata cholonto what type of shadow walking shadow here its function is an adjective but here walking is noun so participle present participle and gerund okay the second past participle past participle i like a boiled egg boiled he is boiling water here the boil is uh, verb but i like a boiled egg here the boiled verb plus past form of the verb when will be used as an adjective then it is called past participle and the final one is perfect participle perfect participle means having having plus having plus v3 means past participle of verb having uh, taken breakfast having taken breakfast i went to school i have come here having taken having stood right well i sat for the exam okay now this is perfect participle and a finite verb finite verb is divided in two parts that is principal principal and auxiliaries auxiliary you know this is the very easy principal verb are again divided into two transitive and intransitive and auxiliary verbs are divided into again two parts that is primary auxiliary and modal auxiliary you know so i don't want to discuss primary auxiliary and modal auxiliary because these are very easy and you have learnt well about primary and modal auxiliaries primary primary auxiliaries are again um, just like be verb have verb have verb do verb and modal auxiliaries are you know can could will would shall should may mind used to would to need as, and so on is going to am going to be going be plus going to transitive and intransitive my question is that what is transitive and what is intransitive i want to discuss transitive and intransitive that's why before discussing transitive and intransitive i have discussed about object because it is related to object so transitive means those verb those verbs need object jader object prejon hoy jemon for example for example i eat or i eat so there is an uh, expectation of knowing that what he or she or i am eating or eat then i eat i eat is rice or tea or breakfast or anything else i eat but intransitive verb they don't need any object birds fly in the sky the baby is sleeping there is no object so transitive and intransitive depends on of using object jar object prejon nai take intransitive bolche tahole motamoti mota dage ekto alochona korlam verb classification ashole to speak the truth each of the topic needs each class ek ekta topic ekta class er proyojon ache ajke sankhipto bhabe just tomader ke bolchi ar ki and now the last part is difference between clause and phrase after uh, watching this class if you have any question you may ask and you know my mobile number it is given in your syllabus you can ask me 
So, now the last part of this uh, today topic is clause and phrase difference between clause clause versus phrase. So, what is clause and what is phrase? The basic difference between a clause and a phrase is that there must be finite and finite verb. So, finite verb. If there is a finite verb, there must be a clause. A finite verb creates a clause. For example, having having breakfast breakfast i went to school in this sentence the clause is that went here's the word went it is finite verb it is associated that what is finite verb finite verb depends on the uh, 12 structural structure of tense this 12 is structural verb the verb which is used in 12 structure of tense it is called finite verb in that sense it is past indefinite that is why it is a finite verb but having breakfast having here the word is non finite word it is a having breakfast it is a participle so what is having breakfast if I set a comma here so having breakfast is a phrase phrase means a group of a group of words where there will be no finite verb yes it is true it don't depends on subject and predicate it depends on finite verb for example do or die here the another example do or die yes do or die call or it is a proverb so this is the first sentence and this is the second sentence at a verb the at a sentence of the body do call otherwise you have to die so in a brief sense do or die so this is a present indefinite tense do finite verb and again finite verb so there are two clause and it is a compound sentence so finite verb dep clause depends on finite verb jekhane finite verb ache seta clause jekhane finite verb nei seta phrase ekhon non finite verb thakte pare having breakfast phrase nashta khe at the very beginning at phrase actually এর ভিতরে হেড ওয়ার্ড থাকতে পারে মডিফায়ার থাকতে পারে কোয়ালিফায়ার থাকতে পারে দ্য কালার অফ ইউর আইজ দ্য কালার অফ ইউর আইজ হে দ্য নো ফাইনাইট ভার্ড সো দের ইজ নো ক্লজ ইজ ফ্রেজ সো দ্যাটস ওয়াল ফর টুডে অ্যান্ড আই হ্যাভ জাস্ট ট্রাই টু সে সামথিং অ্যাবাউট দিস বাট দিস অল থিংস আর নট অ্যানাফ অ্যান্ড আই হোপ ইউ হ্যাভ এনজয়েড মাই ক্লাস Be happy always. Thanks.